Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me Bill and this time we've got something a little bit different in uh, in that it's a repair video. Uh, last year uh, in the depths of lockdown I um, got a realistic DX400 HF uh, receiver um, from eBay for uh, not very much. Um, sold as working on FM only and it's languished here for a while and I've been um, scaring the internet trying to find some information. I've got the circuit diagram that's actually in the back of the user manual which came with it and I've enlarged that um, and that's that's reasonably useful. Um, I've not been able to find a service manual online um, so I've sort of been doing my best to understand a fairly complicated um, uh, circuit diagram. I did find a website that purports to have a service manual but it wanted my credit card details uh, to verify my identity before it would uh, uh, let me join the website. Now maybe it's genuine but I don't think I'm going to take that risk for a, a receiver that cost me a few pounds. So um, if anybody watching knows where I can get a, a legit service manual for the DX400 I'd be very interested. The DX440 manual is really easy to get hold of. Um, in fact I've even got a copy of it but it's um, it's quite a different uh, circuit. I think the design had uh, moved, on, moved on somewhat um, when that one was produced. However one of the for one or two of the forums are on the internet do actually suggest that one of the problems when it does work on FM only is that the FET at the input to the AM and SSB uh, front end has been damaged by static and you should try replacing that. So um, that's uh, what I'm going to do. I've obtained an FET and I'm um, going to uh, put that in and um, and see what see what happens. So uh, let's start by having a look at the circuit board and uh, that uh, complicated circuit diagram which I uh, mentioned. Okay well here's the circuit board of the DX400 and underneath it is the schematic diagram. I'm attached to my anti-static wrist strap and I'll, as I'll explain why in a moment or two. Um, but as you can see from this uh, circuit diagram. <laughs> it's fiendishly complicated for a, for a receiver. Essentially the fault symptom is it works fine on FM but there's absolutely nothing on AM and single sideband. So first thing I did uh, was to have a look at uh, the power supply to the various bits of the board. Essentially what you've got here, just move that aside for a moment, you've got um, microprocessor down here uh, and various logic to select the various bands. This is the front end antenna here. And then you've got um, the FM uh, first IF, front end and first IF here, and the uh, AM and uh, SSB uh, front end. That's the mixer there. Um, and IF and filters, particularly here for the sideband, are, are along here. And then you've got um, audio frequency and various other bits going on across here. This is this power supply. So a couple of things to note first of all is when it's plugged into the mains um, there is no switch for the transformer so if it's plugged in whether the radio is on or off the mains transformer is energized and so is this power supply circuit here, the bridge rectifier here and um, various bits of um, smoothing etc. And don't know how well you're going to be able to see this but the power supply section of the board here um, the AC supply goes in I'm just going to lighten that up a little bit so um, you can hopefully see the exposure uh, yeah AC supply goes in there and here um, you've got a thousand microfarad smoothing capacitor and various other bits of circuitry and it's actually quite burnt around there. Um, I'll just show you a close-up picture of that, you can see it here. Uh, now what I've done is I've cleaned up around those components and checked the values of them and they seem to be uh, actually okay and I've replaced a lot of these electrolytics here as you can see. Um, the old ones were quite big. So we'll just um, 
we'll just have a look in a moment or two at the electrolytics on move for there and how that how they measure up but when it's in the radio um, if I just zoom out a little bit so you can see it when it's in the radio the transformer is here so the heat is rising up so this capacitor is in the heat of the transformer as well as being probably generating some heat because it's um, working hard as the main smoothing capacitor so it may be that that blackening there is to do with this capacitor leaking a little bit um, but we'll we'll look at those capacitors uh, in a moment or two however um, if you search the internet for reasons why there might be a problem here it all comes down to um, this uh, FET which is the um, on the front end here so you've got an FET on the front end there for the FM but the FM is working got another FET here it's a 2SK241GR uh, incidentally those are both drawn as JFETs in actual fact they are they are end channel MOSFETs but I may be in the early 80s when this um, schematic was drawn perhaps they just used that symbol for both but they're definitely MOSFETs and apparently very sensitive to static and um, sometimes replacing that MOSFET uh, is uh, sufficient to, to cure the problem. So that's what I'm going to do. I've got one, I'm going to replace the MOSFET and um, see how we get on. And then uh, we'll put it back in its case and see, um, see if we have uh, any luck at all. But um, it is an incredibly um, complicated circuit. Right, let's just have a look at some of the capacitors that are removed. Okay, I've warmed up the LCR meter. I'm going to pop it into electrolytic capacitor mode and I'm going to select the sub band to be equivalent series resistance. Uh, it's just trying to measure the capacitors between the two probes there. Don't worry about that. So here's the 1000 microfarad 25 volt smoothing capacitor. And as you can see, well, I don't know well you can see it, but it's um, sort of a bit burnt and messy. Um, and I've got a couple of the uh, 2200 microfarad um, capacitors, these are both 10 volt. Um, all these uh, I've removed a, a sort of a whole tinful, but these are the, the main ones that were in all the heat. So um, we'll have a look uh, um, how they're going to respond. But the first thing I'm going to do, first of all, is I'm going to just change the measurement frequency to. 100 hertz um, which is the lowest it'll do um, which I think is about the nearest um, I'm going to get for that uh, that big smoothing capacitor so this is the um, 1000 microfarad 25 volt that was uh, amongst all the heat um, so just let that stabilize so as you can see the ECR uh, LCR meter makes that uh, 320 microfarad so it's about a third of its value and then four and a half uh, ohm CSR. So that capacitor is definitely um, uh, well past its best. Um, I've repeated that measurement a few times and I get a similar kind of thing. So the 2200 microfarad ones that were um, in a subsequent parts of the circuit, that's uh, 2200 microfarads. It's coming up at about 800 microfarads. Um, the SR is a little bit better, but that wasn't in, in the full heat of the transformer. And finally, this is the other 2200 microfarad. Um, slightly better. ESR isn't quite so bad on those two, but I would say that the, the 1000 microfarad capacitor um, is definitely uh, dead. There's actually a um, slight dome on the top, so uh, that was definitely worth replacing. Right, we'll have a look uh, how we're getting on with the replacement of the um, front end field effect transistor. Okay, that's the circuit board back in its case. There's a fiendishly large number of connectors to the board for the various uh, options, but they're all connected up. Um, so I'm just going to finish closing it up. But I just wanted to show you um, the electrolytic that um, was very much dead uh, was that one there. And this is the the bottom of the case this is the top so the heat from that transformer will simply rise up so that couldn't in, in one sense from a um, thermal point of view it couldn't be in a worse place it's, it's being cooked by any heat and remember that I said that when the mains lead is plugged in 
the whole of this bit of circuit is energized whether the radio is, is switched on or not so if you just left that in the in the corner of a room plugged in but switched off um, probably not fully aware that actually it wasn't really switched off um, in fact when I measured the current um, it was drawing about three and a bit watts um, with the radio switched off so there was definitely some heat dissipation so not ideal from uh, um, not an ideal way to treat a capacitor right we'll get it closed up um, get it attached to an external area and see if we can hear anything okay radio's back in its case um, and I'm pleased to say uh, seems to have done the trick it now appears to be working on, on AM as well uh, which is interesting because I just want to show you these two little um, photographs uh, this is a photograph of the uh, original FET this is the results that my little multifunction tester make of it and here is the one for the replacement transistor and yeah, there are some differences but I think significantly both of them appear to, to test out okay um, now since the only thing I've done to this is change one FET and that's caused it to now work I can only assume that the, the previous FET was indeed damaged by static and that isn't uh, something that clearly shows up on the multifunction tester which um, is interesting so make of that what you will. Right um, uh, since I recorded this bit um, night has fallen so I've got the receiver attached to uh, my HF uh, antenna so uh, let's have a listen to some stations. This is the Shannon Volmet, which is always a reasonably strong signal on 5.5 uh, megahertz. Uh, just down the band about 50 kilohertz is the RAF Volmet, which isn't quite so strong. This is the RAF frequency. Actually coming in reasonably well. It's night time now, and it is coming in um, reasonably well for this uh, for this transmission. It's a little bit nearer to me than the um, Shannon one, so isn't always quite as strong. Now let's have a look on 7 megahertz. So this is a Polish station working, a German station actually, and whilst I don't understand what they're saying to each other, I do at least understand the call signs. So I think that's fairly conclusive proof that it's, uh, the FAT has done the trick, which is um, uh, good news. Uh, this was absolutely silent um, there was just nothing at all on sideband and now it's uh, it's booming in okay well this is the dx400 back in its uh, case and i've uh, given it a a once over with uh, what I think the folk in America call Windex um, we call it something similar over here mine isn't a, a brand though it's just a, a supermarket's version seems to have done the trick so it's an interesting receiver um, it's quite nice that it's fully synthesized and it will actually allow you to step around the bands in, in one uh, kilohertz steps and then this uh, control here which is labeled fine tuning it's a bit like a BFO and it gives you two or three kilohertz so you can net onto the um, SSB or the CW signal no problem at all. The RF gain on here is labelled um, DX norm and local it's a, a normal and local it's a three position switch and although you might think to yourself well a rotary controller would have been better it is surprisingly good actually um, does work quite well. Um, nice tone and there's a tone control too. Um, the antenna trim um, is quite interesting, really effective. Um, get that wrong and um, it seems like the radio is completely deaf. Get it right and it uh, picks up rather well. That's actually a, a potentiometer and clearly you can't trim an antenna with a resistor. Um, so the circuit diagram shows I think it's two or four vary caps in the front end which that control um, uh, has the effect on. So yeah actually it, it's a nice radio and um, hopefully it'll give a few more years service. The final tail to the, the field effect transistor is the um, the 2SK241GR which was the front end of the 
um, SSB and AM section um, was working fine and then it stopped again and I'd only bought one and I thought hey ho but then I remembered I'd got another 2SK241 uh, Y which is the one that goes in the front end so a quick glance at the um, uh, specification sheets for those transistors showed that uh, there isn't a great deal of difference in them so I put a, a 2SK241 Y in the front end of the HF section and as you can see she works absolutely fine so that that that's the transistor which was in the same transistor that's in the front end of the FM section which hadn't been attacked by static so maybe I've got a more robust solution there and um, who knows anyway she's working I'm pleased and hopefully um, you found that useful if you've got one of these or thinking of getting one um, that symptom of the FM working but nothing else working is clearly easily cured by replacing that uh, FET in the front end um, thanks for watching if you've enjoyed it please click the thumbs up if not you can click the thumbs down either way it'd be great if you could consider subscribing if you haven't already and look forward to seeing you on the next video